Kia ora, I'm Megan Alatini and welcome to The Itinerary, a show that will delve into the infinite universe that is tourism. Each week I will be joined by a panel of industry experts as we discuss anything and everything to do with tourism. It's an expansive industry and we have a lot of things to cover. And it's certainly a topic I can go on and on about as I have delved into various series and parts of this tourism industry of ours. Today being our first episode, however, there really is only one subject we can kick off with. Across the world, tourism has undoubtedly been the industry worst hit by that COVID-19 pandemic and will probably be the last to recover. But there is hope. There is a bug that is much stronger and more resilient than that coronavirus. And that's the travel bug. When it's safe to do so, New Zealand, of course, will be a dream destination for millions of international jet setters. And in all of the darkness, there is a light. COVID-19 may have presented us with an opportunity to make some much needed change, right some wrongs, and build a truly sustainable future for the industry that the entire country can get behind. So today is very much a State of the Nation episode, and my panel is made up of three incredible tourism professionals who are here to discuss the state of tourism, the effects that they're currently facing and seeing, and what they believe the future of our industry holds. Tania Burt is the General Manager of Destination at Northland Inc., the Economic Development Agency and Regional Tourism Board for the beautiful Northland region. Tania, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Tell me, how has COVID-19 impacted you and your community in Northland? Kia ora, Megan. It's good to be here. Um, I got lost a little bit in your inspirational introduction um, because it is what it is. The travel bug is much stronger than anything we're going to encounter. So um, that being said, the news and, and the events that have unfolded over the last few months for Northland have hit us quite hard. So approximately 11% of Northland's workforce going into lockdown were uh, employed by the tourism industry. Um, but uh, on the flip side of that, 75 5% of the visitor spend coming to Northland was from the domestic market. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a tale of two st stories really yeah. at the moment. We're looking at the immediate impacts were businesses closing, sure. um, whether that was for a short term to uh, make sure they were here in the long term and reopen for next summer season. There was a lot of job loss initially. People mm. didn't know whether they could hold their staff um, or how long they could hold them for. Uh, so that has an impact on the communities far reaching. So we have concentrations of tourism activity like in the Bay of Islands um, but those businesses employ people from across communities um, from from the east the west the north and the south of Northland so the impact when tourism shuts down in Northland is quite big what we also saw is we saw the emergence of partnership and collaboration that yes. wasn't there before. Yeah. So we saw some, again, we were hearing the stories of job loss and 80% of workforces of some companies um, uh, job loss and mm. then we were seeing the emergence of people saying well actually how can we now sit around yeah. the table and make this better and come out of this. Um, I know you guys had some fantastic success with your Treaty of Waitangi strategy and the marketing campaign that that has taken on. In terms of domestically now, does that have to pivot also? Uh, so the Waitangi Treaty Grounds um, benefits from appealing to both the domestic and the international Perfect. visitors. So about a 50-50 split there with visitation traditionally. Yeah. Um, so they launched a domestic campaign leading into the July school holidays, which we've just seen the back of and did very well out of that. Um, that was focused uh, through digital channels um, to the Auckland market and um, a bit further afield and they saw some great uptake. And what we've done as the Northland Regional Tourism Organisation is we did a similar mm -hmm. thing, uh, marketing our region for the July school holidays. Um, 
traditionally Northland's not the place you think of going to in winter. Mm. So when we did get visitors in the July school holidays and boy did they come, it was great to see. Yeah. So it's given some companies a bit of hope. Good. Uh, there are some businesses that still need to pivot. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a bit more maybe niche when you think about a Kiwi and what they want to do. Uh, so they do focus more on the international market. So business by business, there are different needs. Sure. sure. But as a region, we do appeal to that domestic market. So there is some hope there. There's some pivoting, and that word's been used a lot. It's it pivoting is, being it? done by Buzz everyone. Word. Buzzword. <laughs> if but you it's haven't happening, right? pivoted, you haven't tourism. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so even ourselves as the regional tourism organisation, we focused on marketing to international markets. Yeah. We had to turn some of that around and market to the domestic market, actually a lot of that around. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Tell me and the audience about your role with ATED, what that means, and if you can perhaps delve into your Auckland 2025 strategy, uh, the campaigning that was you know, earmarked for mm. the future and how you've had to reshape pivot that for our post-COVID world. Uh, thanks, Megan. Well, when we launched the Destination AKL 2025 strategy just two years ago, I remember thinking that 2025 wasn't that far away. Mm. Um, now that we're in 2020, I think we all just want this year to end. Oh, um, it's been you. an absolute nightmare. But it has provided us an opportunity to uh, go back to the strategy and retest mm. the key focus areas, the, the areas that we felt that we needed to address in order to make sure that Auckland was not just a great place to visit, but it was a great place to live because Wonderful. we've got those out of out of balance. In the aftermath of uh, the, the the impact of COVID, we've taken some time to revisit the, mm. the strategy and we've actually pulled out some areas of it which we feel underpin a recovery plan. Great. So over the course of the next 18 months, we've got a, a clear plan that we're wanting to deliver on, which is consistent with Destination 2025. Mm -hmm. What it's effectively meant is that we've brought forward some of the areas that we were looking to deliver towards the end, sure. toward, closer towards 2025, into the here and now. Mm. And, and partnership and collaboration are a key part of that. So it's great to have Tanya here because Northland and um, Hamilton Waikato are two areas where we need to be doing more. Um, and we've had some really good discussions around how we can create much better efficiencies through shared marketing resource and campaign activity. The visitors don't think anything about a, a boundary line on a map. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Auckland Council and, and the separation between the other territorial authorities, people don't care about that. They just want to know what the experience is going to be. So Perfect. I don't think we should be precious about um, investing our marketing dollar to promote visitation into Northland because gotcha. there's mutual benefit that can be derived from that. I've heard this term over tourism. Uh, for those of us that don't know what that term means, explain that to us a little bit and also the work that goes in and around it. So prior to, to COVID um, and certainly through uh, 2017 and into 2018, we were seeing from time to time, not consistently, but there'll be periods of the year where the numbers of visitors visiting a particular part of Auckland were such that it was overrunning the local infrastructure and the community was feeling a little bit upset about their ability to experience their own neighbourhood sure. freely. And Waiheke was a good illustration of that. We were starting to see some of that um, in Matakana yes. early stages. So what, what this has enabled us to do now is to go back and to effectively, retrospectively, mm. build in some tolerance into the system. Right. Part of the impact um, of all those visitors was that certain parts of the visitor economy hadn't moved enough sure. to account for the visitors mm -hmm. that were coming in. So we didn't have a transport infrastructure that enabled us to get people to the places we were promoting. Mm -hmm. So now we've got some time to think that through more, more keenly and right. working with key agencies like Auckland Transport, making sure that there is a seamless way for us to be able to get people into particular parts for of the sure. region and out of Auckland. You have been so patient, sitting here nicely <laughs> beside me, Mr. Zach Watson. Thank you for joining us. Young Tech, Tourism, Export Council, have I got that right? You have, yep. 18 to 36, so I don't fit into that bracket, Tanya, I think you do, but okay. Steve, you're out as well, but fantastic. <laughs> Supporting our young tourism budding experts, How's it been? What are the effects? What's the impact? And also, thank you for what you're doing and setting up that support system for our young people. Yeah, kia ora, Megan. Uh, thank you very much for having me here, first of all. Uh, yeah, it's definitely been a, a time like no other. Um, we've 
seen an impact on me- uh, membership that uh, had, to be honest, has been a little bit better than we thought it might have been. Um, we're still in the process of running an audit just to see where our, our members are at. We normally have just under 300 members okay. nationwide across all regions. Uh, we, we've equated for sort of around 170 okay. at the moment. So, um, and, and those those losses are, are across the board. So there's a lot of redundancy there, of course. There's a lot of people having changed circumstances. For um, sure. What is the advice that you give? Uh, do you say, we see the numbers are declining for now and we understand why. So is it an opportunity to upskill, reskill, cross-skill? What, what's the advice that you give? Of course, yeah. We we uh, changed our organisation. I suppose our core purpose has always been professional development for yep, young people. Sure. Um, we've got a nationally recognised professional development program, which a lot of our members have run through. Um, through this time, we changed to an, an overall purpose of connection nice. um, and communication just to, I, I guess, make sure our members ha- always have a pathway back into the industry no matter their circumstances. And we're very proud to sort of provide that platform for our young people in the industry. Nice. Um, in terms of advice uh, to people, uh, you know, everybody's circumstances are individual sure. at the moment, but we're doing our utmost to, to be able to offer as much sort of free or low-cost co- low activity um, which awesome. talks to not only professional development but also connection um, and, and partnerships and collaboration across New Zealand uh, to to ensure yeah our, our members are not left behind because um, awesome. at the end of the day uh, we, we represent a lot of the, the front line uh, in the middle management um, sectors of, sure. of the tourism industry and, and those have been hit extremely hard with the Absolutely. job losses. Um, I think that's, it's, it's actually just as important now as it was pre-COVID. We know from research that we were Uh, a long way shy of the number of people we actually needed to Mm. have working in the sector. If the projections are true and that by 2025 we're back to 2019 Mm. visitation levels, the borders have opened up and people are coming back in, now's the time for us to be planning for the people who need to be working in those jobs. Some people will come back in, some people won't, Mm. but they've gone off on a different career path now and they won't, they'll decide that that's where they want to stay. So for focusing in with schools in particular, uh, supporting mm. the work of Go With Tourism, the work of Young Tech and others, it gives us a great opportunity to ensure that we're not having to rush to cater to a shortfall. So we've got we're a building bit of time. that tolerance and we've resilience in now. Yeah. Awesome. In terms of Northland's respond for the next uh, response for the next year within recovery, um, what are some final words that you'd like to share with us, Tania? Final words are really hard when you talk about hope Mm. because I don't think it should be final. Mm. Um, But some of the things that we're doing and we're working towards are building on those collaborations that emerged um, when we were in our homes looking at screens, um, building on those collaborations and taking a more strategic approach to how we develop tourism in Northland and how we recover. So we have beautiful experiences, special places and amazing people. How do we bring all of that together and how do we form an industry that is um, more resilient, more collaborative, and it just really speaks to what the region's all about. I'm going to ask our young gun to finish us <laughs> off for this episode. <laughs> that, that's me. Yeah, that's Steve. Right, take off it away. We go, yeah. <laughs> so um, when we speak to the future, when we look at our future generations coming through, what is the guidance, the advice? Where do you think our industry should or could be moving to? You're speaking specifically now to our young people. Tell them what it is that you foresee and the advice that you can give them as the chair of Young Tech. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a, an extremely hard question, I guess, as Tanya said, in this time, it's often tough just to sort of box it up because mm. things are changing daily. Um, but I, I think tourism uh, was getting to the point where, uh, through the incredible work of a lot of people, getting to the point where it was becoming a really aspirational industry mm. to work in here in New Zealand and the, the growth and the size and the positive stories that were coming through were, were all aiding that. Um, I, I guess as in, in my role at Young Tech, I, I'm hoping that doesn't go away in our, uh, throughout our young people, particularly as Steve touched on those coming through our high schools and universities at the moment. We really don't want to lose that channel of, mm. of talented young people coming into the industry because we will recover. We will. Um, tourism is, is full of incredibly amazing, passionate people and our young people are, are classic examples of that. So. I think if uh, you know there's well, there's one piece of advice, I would just say hold on because mm. we will we will get back to where we were. Um, it, it's an, it still is and, and always will be an incredible industry to work in. Um, and and yet, me for example, I don't see myself mm. ever going anywhere else. So, awesome. um, 
yeah, I'd hold on. Hold on. We move on to Jason Biggs, a strength coach based in Auckland, who will share his advice on how to stay resilient during these troubling times. Say you or someone in your family comes home with the following grades, an A in English, an A in social studies, a C in science, and F in maths. Which of these grades would you spend the most time talking about? A study found that 77% chose to focus on the F and only 7% on the A. Our brains are hardwired to focus on weakness, but what would happen if we focused on what is right with people rather than fixating on what is wrong with them? We all have talents, our natural way of thinking, feeling and behaving that brings change. For many of us, these talents are off radar. I'm sure you've been asked in a job interview, tell me what your strengths are. And normally what follows is silence and then we offer generics like team player, hard worker, friendly. The key to success is to fully understand how to identify and apply your greatest talents and strengths in your everyday life. To focus on those A's. People who know their strengths and get to apply them in what they do, achieve more on a daily basis, look forward to going to work, have more positive than negative interactions, treat customers better, tell your friends that you work for a great company, have more positive, creative and innovative moments. But how do you discover what you're good at? There are five clues. One, yearning. What do you know you can do well but haven't yet done? Two, rapid learning. What have you done well that you didn't need explained? Three, glimpses of excellence. What have other people told you you're great at doing? Four, satisfaction. What sorts of activities do you finish and think, I can't wait to do that again? Five, flow. A state where your brain is 100% all in. What are you doing when time seems to disappear? Fantastic advice right there. And if you would like to understand more about building resilience, you can contact Jason via his website, jasonbiggs.nz. Now, education is the key to success, as many say, and it certainly is an important part of our tourism industry. It is well known, but admittedly, our industry in the secondary school arena is a bit too undervalued and there are many tertiary courses dedicated to tourism in universities, ITOs and PTEs across the countries to thousands of students who study tourism every year. You may think that education is a safe bet while New Zealand jobs are being impacted by the pandemic. But unfortunately, it was announced recently that the Tertiary Education Commission is proposing cutting funding towards tourism PTEs as a direct result of COVID-19. To help me explore this topic, I have three amazing education professionals with me right now who all focus on tourism as their subject of choice. Julie McDougall, secondary teacher at McLean's College, specialising in tourism and is the chairperson for Tourism Teachers Association here in New Zealand. Julie, welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. being with us. Now, We've talked about the subject being undervalued. Please tell me, is that true? And also, what is it that we can do to change that to have a better impact? In normal times, it appears to be tough. How are we coping with it now, post COVID-19? I think that probably it's been undervalued for quite some time in the community um, and, and probably in education circles. Um, but in fact, many tourism teachers try to, you know, expand and uh, not just work towards the curriculum. Um, I think that if we could improve the curriculum and take it away from just being for um, frontline type workers, that would be really good. And if we could expand out to all the varying roles which are available um, as tourism is really big business um, yeah, around the world sure. and show those sorts of ideas and then consider the way um, of assessing those sorts of things. So it's not really what's being taught in tourism classrooms because I think many teachers are um, going a lot more broadly than what their it's requirements are. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think that that would be helpful. Now, we know that the pandemic has impacted our industry tremendously. 
are students worried and, and what are you telling them about it? I'm mean, actually secondary students mostly are not concerned. Okay. Maybe they're stuck yeah. in their own little bubbles. Oh, that's sometimes <laughs> a good thing, wouldn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> but also they do have opportunity if they when they do leave school to get involved in educational um, programs. Yes. Which is going to be good training for them to get you know, more qualifications to set them apart later on. So they are a little bit protected. Sure. Um, and that's what I'm advising my students to do, is to consider what they really have a passion in yes. um, and to follow their dreams, but also to be flexible, um, building some resilience, Great. Uh, really. I'm going to bring us over to Claire. Claire, nice to have you. Okay. So CEO of the International Travel College of New Zealand, premium supply of training courses for our tourism industry. Can you please share with us how has your school been affected? Um, our students were brilliant. Uh, they were really resilient. They were really positive and they all worked during lockdown. So, you know, the day we locked down, they all went online. They literally had a day to get themselves sorted and we went straight to an online platform. Oh, fantastic. And isn't it great how you were able to quickly get that going? So wonderful work there. Uh, has there been a change in the number of applications coming in for your school? The, the timing was, you know, it's a quiet time of year anyway, going yes. into kind of April and May. Sure. So a lot of the high school students come um, January, February, March anyway. Sure. So those students were the ones who were already made the decision. They've yes. often come through high schools anyway. Yes. So those students' numbers hadn't dropped off much, but obviously during lockdown, we couldn't enrol because of the course. students wanted to come on campus. But the students overwhelmingly said that they felt that the online support we'd given them had really enabled them. Great. Um, and it gave them a focus. You know, they've already made the decision to Wonderful. study. So they actually felt supported um, and it's what they wanted to do and I think we, we need to remember that this is their decision and Good. their passion and this is what the industry needs is you know kids who have got such resilience and, and that passion for definitely. it wonderful Megan Roberts who is the tourism work integrated learning leader industry liaison and senior lecturer of go on tell us Megan <laughs> of the Bachelor of International Tourism Management at um, AUT uh, share with me how is it for you it's interesting because um, you know so much is happening for the industry but um, as Julie said students are a little bit in their bubble yes. um, <clears throat> our new students who just arrived last week are really excited mm. you know they're really looking forward to their career in tourism which obviously is three years away because yes. they're studying an undergraduate degree yes um, and that is the message that we're, we're delivering yeah. is that, you know, now's a really good time to study because at the end of your studies, the industry will be back up and rolling. Fantastic. Um, so it's an investment for them. Are they looking forward to that? Oh, totally, totally. And I mean, looking at the students that were out doing their work integrated learning placements through the um, lockdown yes. <coughs> um, of an experience. I think we yes. built some resilience oh, there. Yes, you know, we there's a, a group of students that went through that experience as yes. part of their industry placements. Yes. Um, but they are really positive mm, about right. building their career. Claire, what messaging are you sharing with your students in terms of come to ITC? This is going to be a great industry practice experience for you. What is the messaging that you're sharing? We're really focused on saying to the students that have always had an interest in tourism, it's still an industry. Yes. 90% of our students are in tourism-related work roles yes. and domestic tourism is going really well. Yes. So we're saying to the students, don't be disheartened and actually the, the future is going to be different. Yes. But actually, you know, we've gone through SARS, we've gone through 9-11, we've gone through, you know, tourism has gone through so many big yes. changes. Um, actually, it gives the students the skills and experience yes. to say, yeah, this is what I did. And we've said to our students, look at your experience when you've been studying and how can you apply that to a job? How good can you be at doing a completely different role? How helpful will you be if a hotel suddenly says you're in quarantine? Yes. And students are really seeing that, you know, that skill is actually what employers need. Wonderful. And you can say to them you're part of it now and in the future with yeah. that change. It's, I think it's going to give employers, if I was looking at somebody who'd, you know, study during lockdown and look at their CV and they've been an essential worker because yes. many of our students oh, were yes. and you know look at them when they're applying for a job an employer is going to go these these people have got the skills not to I think that tourism in a tertiary environment has been challenged in the last uh, probably more than 10 years <laughs> sure because if you are not a university entrance accredited subject then 
students are not going to look at taking that subject in secondary school because it doesn't necessarily give them that, to um, transfer that road over. into university, sure. which is kind of ironic given that we offer tourism-related programs across multi-level tertiary yeah. um, organisations. For an industry that is huge. And yeah. really that perception in terms of uh, translating into student numbers mm. has been impacting our sector for mm. quite a while. If we have to say an issue or a main problem for you as educators, tourism educators, uh, what would you like to share with us and how is it that we as an industry and a community can support better? Well, it probably does need to start, doesn't it, at the secondary education level. Yeah. Um, and our programmes do need to uh, be more varied as far as the assessments. The uh, At the moment, it's a series of unit standards. Uh, it would be very good if we could bring in some critical thinking and analytical thinking and creative thinking um, and maybe, you know, have the opportunity from the ministry to, uh, you know, have some achievement standards, good, which are tourism-based here. Because my there is, where does the government play into that? And mm -hmm. do we need mm -hmm. further support, further enhancements to make sure that our directives are going in the right way? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, at the moment, there is the full NCA review going on. Um, and so we're hopeful as an organisation that we can maybe, uh, you know, be come involved in some conversations with the Ministry of Education around tourism. Great, there. great. Uh, Julie, given that tourism is such an earner for our economy, do you believe that secondary school teachers of tourism are getting the right support within their school leadership programme and team? I, th I think that it depends on which school you're in um, and whereabouts in the country, maybe. Um, and so there's a variety. Sure. But it would be lovely to have um, full support and Good. understanding that tourism is a huge mm -hmm. industry, actually, worldwide, not just, yes. you know, what it was in New Zealand. And um, just to, you know, reiterate maybe the variety of roles which are involved in there. Um, you know, over the period of the pandemic, unfortunately, some people have lost um, roles, but roles which many of us would never have had any idea were actually there in the start. Sure. So it would be really good to be able to share and dig and delve into more of those. Next up, we will hear from Kate Godfrey of Madison Recruitment on how to get work ready if you have been displaced from your tourism job because of COVID-19 or if you've decided to make a career change. Followed by the amazing success story of how Go With Tourism pivoted and what they are now offering. So you're on the job market, what's your next step? Use your connections, update your LinkedIn status, let your Facebook network know and create a profile on Seek. You may also want to get back in touch with any agencies that you've worked with in the past or education providers that you've done courses through. In New Zealand we talk about two degrees of separation, so make the most of your connections. For the next 6 to 12 months at least, it's important to stay open to a range of opportunities. Temporary roles can be a good option, particularly while the market remains unpredictable. Temp work is a good way to expand on your experience, learning a new trade and adding it to your current skill set. It's also an opportunity to test drive different jobs or industries if you're not sure you're ready to commit, but you've always wanted to give something different a go. Temporary work is different from part-time or casual. Casual means there's no set hours. Some weeks it could be zero, some weeks it could be 60 hours. Part-time hours are generally the same hours of work each week, except it's less than 40 hours a week, normally about 30. Temporary work can either be part-time or a full 40-hour week. The difference is that temporary jobs are for a set amount of time, whether that be one day or six months. They also tend to move quickly, so it can be really good if you're starting work straight away. When you're scrolling through the job ads, remember what's important to you, what your priorities are when applying for a role. Think about whether you're prepared to move to a different city, work different hours, or even take a bit of a pay cut if it means there's long-term potential. Are you open to retraining for a different job or industry? Be aware of your transferable skills. You probably have more than you realise. People in the tourism industry often don't advertise some of these skills because they just see them as a natural part of the job. But custom service, leadership, autonomy, communication, sales, all these skills can be taken to your next role. Kia ora, I'm Matt Stenton and I'm the Programme Director for Go With Tourism. 
After we launched last year, we immediately found ourselves in a whirlwind of success, which saw us expanding nationally and enhancing our program with the fantastic tourism industry ideas that had been given to us. In March this year, we were just about to launch into our fifth region of New Zealand when the impact of COVID-19 on tourism became clear. It was at this point, about two weeks before lockdown, we came up with a plan to pivot our strategy from building the tourism workforce to supporting it instead. And on the 26th of March, exactly one day after lockdown, we launched a brand new service. We began to offer personalised one-on-one assistance for those who had been affected in our tourism workforce and helping to redeploy displaced workers. More than 2,500 individuals reached out to us. Because our team of 5 million did a fabulous job at containing the virus and New Zealand was able to return to a new normal to serve a motivated domestic market, many of the individuals who signed up with us were able to return to their old jobs or operate their businesses once again. But as an industry that does rely heavily on international tourists, the impact was still significant. We're still in the middle of helping our displaced workers find new jobs and so far we've placed more than 200 people. We recently reactivated our Job Connector, dubbed Tinder for tourism, to better connect job seekers with employers. It's a modern approach to job search and recruitment, which allows hiring managers to search for their perfect candidate. For now, the Job Connector is available to any employer in New Zealand to ensure we get all our displaced people into work. We're also very excited that we are starting to move forward with projects that we planned prior to our pivot. As we see it, COVID-19 was a once in a lifetime event. Tourism will recover, so we need to work hard to change the negative views the general public have about careers in our industry. We hope to encourage Kiwis to choose tourism as their future and either build up their skills in another industry or study while it rebuilds over the next couple of years. To achieve this, we have launched our education program where we will bring fun and informative lessons to secondary schools around the country. We have the Go With Tourism Expos commencing in August and going through September around New Zealand. And we have developed our new web-based series, The Itinerary, which you are currently watching. And there is still so much more to come. Although tourism has taken a hit now, Go With Tourism is putting the building blocks in place to attract a future workforce. Visit gowithtourism.co.nz for more information. Go With Tourism, supporting our tourism workforce. That's it for this week's show. Join us next week when we will be discussing travel and tourism with another amazing lineup of industry professionals and educators. I look forward to chatting with you all again, same time, same place. Go with tourism, supporting our tourism workforce. Hi, Rera.